We're here at the INSEAD Leadership Summit Europe celebrating the school's 50th anniversary with Adam Goldstein, the CEO and President of Royal Caribbean International. Welcome. Thank you. I'd like to start with your industry. Uh, how hard hit was your industry by the economic crisis? Well, we definitely felt it, and we had revenue decline of 14% last year, but we believe ultimately what we demonstrated was the resilience of the industry under great stress. We continued to fill our ships at the same rate as before. We had to sacrifice a little bit on the price side to do that. But what we found is that there were still millions of people who wanted to come on vacation with us. It's a bit surprising. As an outsider, I would have expected that that industry in particular would have been harder hit than others. We were able to get across the value proposition. Even under stress, we were able to get across to the consumer community and to travel agents that when you look at everything that's included in a cruise, that in an environment where you're being very careful about how, you're spend, how you spend your money and you still want a vacation, the cruising would be the choice for you under those circumstances. If we could go back, let's say, to before the recession started, we were very, very bullish about the upcoming years. Uh, a lot of ships were being ordered, uh, global markets being penetrated, and so we weren't anticipating a significant obstacle on the course. But because we are bullish on the long-term prospects for the industry, we do see people at all in Europe, Asia, Latin America, and of course North America continuing to cruise for the first time. Our sense is that we can move through even a difficult recessionary period and continue on our course. How quick was your reaction? Because you, as you mentioned, you were blindsided, but how quickly did you kind of grasp the situation? That's an interesting question, our reaction, because the third quarter of 2008 was the most profitable quarter in the history of the company. Within six months, we were clearly in a very different time frame. And because people are purchasing their cruises for far in advance compared to many other types of purchases, six, nine, 12 months in advance, we had still quite a good book of business as the world moved into recession. So we had a little bit of time, I think, because of that phenomenon to kind of gauge what we need to do because the sailings that we, we began to feel pressure on to sell were a little bit further down the road. So we probably had a little bit more luxury in terms of how to react to the environment that was unfolding than maybe some other businesses might have had. How did you react then? Did you change your, strat your marketing strategy in terms of bringing people in and customers in? We didn't retrench at all. We actually felt that if we were very, if we stayed very committed to developing the to Europe as a cruise market to a great extent and then to a lesser extent Asia and Latin America, that whenever the recession ended, we would emerge as a stronger company with more developed markets to, to source customers from in addition to North America. And so that was the mission that we took on. And, and as the, the recession has now ended officially and the economy is, let's say, slowly say. improving, <laughs> uh, we, we feel like there's great opportunity for us looking forward. The economic crisis, it, it's been really tough and I'm just wondering if it's had any impact on companies' social conscience. Uh, in terms of social consciousness, it happened to be that during the recession, we put out our environmental stewardship report for the first time online, very comprehensive document that we're very proud of. Then in our particular case, and it was happenstance, that one of the private destinations that we um, control is in Haiti. And so when the earthquake happened in Haiti, we are the number two foreign direct investor in the country. And so for our people and our top management and everybody sort of surrounding us, uh, the idea of responding to that tragedy and helping the people in Haiti begin to get through it was very compelling for us. Any Ver specifics on that? Well, we had the great fortune to be able to use our ships to bring relief supplies, which is not an opportunity that all companies have, of course. We were able to continue to call on the north coast of Haiti, so let's say 100 miles from Port-au-Prince, but nevertheless, the entire country was affected by the calamity. And because we were able to continue to play our role as an economic engine, it was very, very beneficial to give hope to the people in the North Coast that the world wasn't ending. And as time has gone on, because we're now four months post-earthquake, uh, the people can see that we're very committed to building school or schools in the North Coast. We're very committed to working with the Haitian government to make the Citadel be the tourism attraction that it should be. Actually, nobody knows about the Citadel really outside of the cruise industry or outside of Haiti. It should be, it's the largest fortification in the whole of the Americas from Chile to the Arctic, and nobody goes there to visit it. And one of our commitments at Royal Caribbean is to help that come alive. And I think that that type of behavior is incumbent upon corporations 
going forward. I think that the pressures on society and the ramifications of what we've all experienced macroeconomically are such that corporations, governments, citizens, everybody needs to pitch in now and help in ways that maybe weren't as obvious before. We all need to be involved in finding solutions. What role has INSEAD played in your career? Well, I'm a great fan of INSEAD in general and, and specifically of the experience that I had. Uh, I came here in the late 80s at a time when it, INSEAD was not well known at all in the United States. Uh, it made sense for me because I had already gone to law school as well as university and I didn't really... Harvard and Princeton, so top of the line. So I had seven years of uh, Ivy League education, I guess, under my belt at that point and I really didn't feel any need to continue my education in the United States. I was a Francophile and when I found out that you could achieve an MBA degree in France in one very intense year, that made a lot of sense to me. It was the only business school to which I applied, so if I hadn't gotten in, I wouldn't have gotten my MBA. But I did and I came here and it was, it was a spectacular experience. And when I try to articulate that to people who, who aren't proximate to it, what I say is the fact that no matter who is speaking, they are not in the majority. Nobody is in the majority here. Everybody is in the minority. And therefore, you must really think about what you're saying. And you can't win an argument simply because there's more of you than there are of anybody else. You've got to make your argument. Uh, the people are wonderful. Everybody is here because they're interested in being in business and, and having the degree and furthering their education in this area. They tend to get along great and uh, work hard and play hard too. Do you think it's a much different place today than it was when you were going? It certainly has more facilities, more programs, more visibility. It, it, it's much more significant, I would say, on not only the European stage but on the world stage. It has the other campuses now as well. It's, it's a much more sophisticated environment, I think, in terms of understanding business and progressing business education than when I was here in 1987, 88. But I as far as I can tell, and maybe this is something that all alumni would like to believe, but as far as I can discern, uh, the sort of basic fabric of the place remains the same. It is a multicultural, multinational experience that brings people together who are, um, who may be very different by background, but are of a like mind to want to explore their business horizons and take what they learn here and go out into the world and do well. And I hope that that doesn't change. Any advice? to students? What I would say to students is make maximum use of your time here. You may spend an hour talking about operations and then you may go to a different amphi and spend a different hour talking about marketing and you may think that they're very different phenomenon. But if you do end up in general management, it's the synthesis of it all that probably will determine your success. So to try to make sense of it all, that, that would be my advice. Thank you very much for joining us on NCAD Knowledge. You're welcome.